I was researching the perfect portrait lens. And then I was realizing I already own three possible portrait lenses. And I decided to compare them. I have a photo project coming up where I have to do a lot of portrait photography. So I started researching my gear. And I was thinking, maybe I need to have a new lens, a new portrait lens. So what is a good focal length for portrait? After researching for a while, I circled around the Sigma 85 art lens with 1.4 aperture. That seemed for me as the perfect focal length because it has a fast aperture. But then again, it's, it's a Sigma lens, but it's not a cheap Sigma lens. It's more than thousand dollars. And so I was like, hmm, is it really worth it? And then I realized I own three Leica 90mm lenses. I own the 2490 Vario Elmerit SL lens. I own the Apple Vario Elmerit 90-280mm. And I have a 90mm Sumicron M lens, which I can use with an adapter on my SL camera. The first one is the standard zoom from Leica, which came out together with the first SL. It's from 24 to 90. Usually the standard zooms are from 24 to 70 or 28 to 70. This one is a little bit longer. It has 24 to 90. It's a fantastic lens. It's a very stable build. It's heavy. It's a little bit over a kilo. And there is one little downside with that lens. It has not a continuous aperture. If you start on a 24, you have an aperture of 2.8. If you go to 90, which we want to do now, we have an aperture of 4. This is the fastest aperture you get with the 90. The second one is the enormous 90 to 280, which is a fantastic, enormously wonderful lens. I love that lens because usually the tele zooms on full frame cameras are going from 70 to 200 because this starts later. It starts at 90. It goes up until 280. I don't know how Leica came up with that, but it's fantastic because this little bit more than 200 to go to 280. It already helped me so many times and with uh, 47 megapixel on the SL2, uh, I can crop and it, it, I have Im immense possibilities with that lens. And I think once the SL3 comes out, I'm like expecting around 60 megapixels there. So this is going to be even more value to me when they increase the megapixels on the SL line. With this lens, we also don't have a continuous aperture. We have a 2.8 until 4. But the difference here is, here we have 90 millimeters at an aperture of 2.8. When we go up to 280, then we're going to have an aperture of 4. And then we have the beautiful Summicron 90mm M lens with an aperture of 2. So even a bit faster than the um, longer zoom lens. The problem with that lens is it has no autofocus, so I have to manually focus. It's an M lens, it has an M mount, which does not fit on the SL, so we have to use an adapter. There's the Leica M2L adapter. It's a rather expensive adapter, it's about $400. And then you can mount this on the lens. Then we can beautifully put that lens on the SL2 and it balances very well. The problem here is we don't have autofocus, we don't have weather sealing. So that we have to, I think, but who wants to shoot portraits in the rain? <laughs> Maybe, but not, not for my project I have to do. So in the overview, the problem with the 2490 is the fastest aperture of f4 and not faster and the weight i would say but the lens is very well balanced in your hands with the sl2 the 90 to 280 is definitely the weight a problem with 1850 grams it is not so well balanced so depending on how long your shooting will take it really can affect the photographer's stability the 90m lens is of course the problem that you need an adapter and it has no autofocus and no weather sealing. With this out of the way, we now can go to the test. How do I test those lenses and how do I compare those lenses? I asked an actor who is used to do headshots, my friend David DeLuis, if he would be my model to do those tests. And we met up in Malibu and did a really fun test shooting. And I'm gonna show you this now. I'm gonna show you some results. I'm gonna do some technical comparison of those tests 
And I'm going to talk to David about how he likes the pictures, if he even sees a difference, because in the end, for the photographer, it's also important that the client, in this case, the actor, is happy with the result. And often, in my experience, I like different pictures than the actors. So in the end, the client decides. And David and I also covered the topic of how a photographer has to behave on a shooting to give an actor a good feeling and a good work environment. It's not a wide shot, it's a close shot. But can you take pictures of someone very far away with that? Yes, not so far, it's a 90. That's the special thing here. We're talking about 90 millimeters. Okay. Yeah, it's all 90s. I have three different 90s. What's your definition of what 90 is? It's 90 millimeter, it's physics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Can yeah. you tell us why I'm the actor? <laughs> okay, David. Um, that would help, it's right? It's good if you take the lens cap mm -hmm. off. <laughs> You're feeling relaxed? No. I, I, all I can do is see my eyebrow. Do you see my eyebrow? <laughs> yeah, it's my look at Oh, God. <laughs> no, but I mean, there's one hair. Okay, there. A little bit more like... Turn a little bit towards me. So, a typical American headshot, how would that look like? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually straight on and just chin down and... Yeah, chin down is good and you have more of your eyes, you know? Now we're gonna go to an aperture. So aperture is how much light is being let in. Uh, yeah, exactly. Wow, good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> You're impressed. I'm impressed. So let me change the lens. Okay. So that was a 90. That was the 90. But from, they're all going to be 90. They're all going to be 90. But what's the difference between that 90 and the next 90? This one is a 2490 zoom lens. Okay. With an aperture 2.8 until four. Okay. So it has not a fixed aperture. Got it. It's a four in the 90. That's why I brought this little guy. The little guy. Which is a 90 to 280. Ah. And on the 90 side, it has a 28, which is amazing. Now, this is also very cool. You can just. I mean, it's shooting from the hip. Exactly. What is the term that you would say in German if you wanted to say shoot from the hip? Aus der Hüfte schießen. Auf der Hüfte schieben. Aus der Hüfte schießen. Auf der Hüfte Aus. schieben. Aus. Aus der Hüfte schießen. Aus der Hüfte schießen. Auf der Hüfte schießen. Aus. 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 But what is aus? Auf ist was anderes. Aus is like from. Oh, from. Aus. Aus. Der Hüfte schießen. Aus der Hüfte schießen. But what you're saying is auf der Hüfte schießen. It means she on, on the, hip. the hip. Not meaning that so at the auf hip. Is Auf is on, but not in the meaning of at. Right. It's on top of the hip. Right, right. You don't want to shoot on top of the hip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this 90 goes up to what you say, two, 280. 280. I think I'm Sheps. You know what Sheps means? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. What? Sheps means not straight, uh, like. Oh. Level. Not, not, not level, thank you. Sheps is level. Sheps is not, Sheps is not level. Ah. Sheps is. What would you, how would you say level? Gerade. Like grade. The, the tool that we use is called a level. When you want to hang a shelf or something, what do you call that? A gerade too? It's a Wasserwalk. Uh, and a, a, a water scale. A water scale Wasserwalk. I, <laughs> that's the Swiss, Swiss, Swiss term and say Wasserwalk. So are you going to change the aperture again or? Yeah. So there's a little something on the lens. That's, Nothing, that's, that's that little that little white dot there? No, nothing. It doesn't mean anything, right? It's, uh, it's just dust. But and you won't see that, but uh, what was the whole thing about checking the gate? That was um, the, that the film was running through the camera. Right, and if through, it was, was... running through the gate. Right. And sometimes it, it like ripped off little pieces of the film. Ah. And if that got stuck, it looks like a hair. 
Oh, that got so stuck. it wasn't an actual hair. It wasn't it a hair. Was... It was a little bit of like a, a hair of the film. No, not a lot of people know that. Those were the days. So if I now change into a four, what we had before with the other lens, will it look the same? I, who knows? That's the question. Do you like have your picture taken? Um, when I'm feeling good, I mean, I feel a little heavier now, but... When you change the focal length that much, the head form kind of is different. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> But in what way? It makes it longer, skinnier? No, actually, the I think the longer the lens it makes it. This makes it a little bit. I, I know you're talking about lenses and all that stuff, but when working with someone and taking headshots, mm -hmm. what the photographer says really affects what's happening. Of course. But but sometimes photographers don't think about that. In the same way that a director is only sometimes focusing on their shot and what's happening. But then it's not a good photographer. Or, or and not a good director, right? Yeah, but when I do portraits, it's my main, I mean, that's technical stuff. Yeah. The, my main thing is to give you a good feeling right. and make you forget about that we're shooting. And But I'm telling you that sometimes photographers don't know that. <laughs> All right, so this is a 90. This is a 90 fixed lens for an other camera system actually. It's manual, it has no autofocus, so it's a little bit harder for me. And um, it's a fantastic lens for the other system. And you can adapt it, here's a little adapter. Right. And this goes 90 to? This is 90, fixed lens. Oh, just 90 just fixed, 90. okay. Yeah. So when I go to a 2.8, which the other lens has, right. it's harder. Takes, I think it takes a lot of practice. Okay. So that it's in focus, you mean? Yeah. Now I go to a four, which helps me. Yeah, easier. Turn a little bit towards me, please. Yeah. You can actually see the aperture. It's, it's With this one, the, yeah. The, yeah. The pupil of the camera is smaller. So back at the office, let's look at the technical aspect of those pictures. So I pre-selected some pictures. The one marked with a star are the 2490. The two star pictures are the 90 to 280 and the three star are the Apple M lens. So we can compare now different variations. The first two I want to look at are aperture F4 because this is the starting aperture on the 2490 with the 90 millimeter focal length, it has an F4. Here I was not so concentrated, I see with the, uh, my aperture settings, I somehow set the aperture on 3.5 and not on four, but it's close enough. So for me, the, the 90 to 80 is a little bit more, I don't know, organic, even though it's a little bit further away. With the 2890, I'm a little bit closer to David, so that actually should help the background to be a little bit more creamier, which it is not. I mean, maybe it's the half, half to stop, but I don't know. It should, it should not make that big a difference. Here, I would say the 9280 is my winner when I am at an aperture 4. When I now compare the widest open aperture on the 90-280, which is a 2.8, with the 2.8 on the Apple, because with the 24-90 we cannot do that. And then we're getting a really interesting comparison. And for me here, I have to say, I think I like the M lens more. It's a little bit more, the, the bokeh is, okay, I'm not exactly in the same background, but the bokeh looks a little bit more organic, a little bit more, somehow has the higher value. It renders a little bit differently. Otherwise, we're, when we go to the hair, we're pretty sharp on both of them. Yeah, the, the 280 is a bit sharper. The 90 to 80, it's hard to say, actually, in this one for me. It's not that big a difference. Of course, in the end, the, 280, the 90 to 80 probably wins again because it has the autofocus. So 
the result on the M lens is not that much better that I would like don't want to have my autofocus because you see David is relaxer in the in the 90 to 80 because I was relaxer <laughs> probably and so the the manual lens okay maybe for me maybe you're better in manual focusing with a with a with a moving subject at that kind of apertures I I really have uh, I have struggles but actually it's kind of interesting when we now compare the two SL lenses with the same aperture at a 5.6 they look a little bit different okay again I'm a little bit closer on David with the 2490 maybe this half a meter already makes that big a difference but of course the background is still like the same distance away that half meter shouldn't make that big a difference and here I would say at 5.6 I like the 2490 better I mean in the end of course I can compare the same apertures and then we see a little bit different renderings but when you do portraits and when you don't want to have like the crazy sharp portraits, when you want to have like um, concentrate on your eyes and then you have a fall off on the face, you want to have a faster aperture. So that's why I initially started looking at a 1.485 lens. So when I now go on the fastest aperture for each lens and I compare those, this is basically the most interesting comparison for me at this point in this test. So we have here different pictures which are kind of look the same with the different cameras. And now if you compare open aperture on both lenses, on the left side we have the 2490 and on the right side we have the 9280. And of course here you see an enormous difference uh, in the background. Because of course I had the 28 and the 4 at 90 millimeters, it's an immense difference. So the 2490 is for portraits it's not optimal so if i change this and i go here to the m lens it's even more if you see what happens to the background it's here i would say it's the m lens so if i compare the the 90 to 80 so we have a 2.8 and a 2 now and it's also i think it's an enormous difference of course the 2.8 still looks like kind of interesting because there's a little bit structure in the bouquet but man, the creaminess behind David in the M lens with the F2, it's fantastic. So if you go a little bit closer, for example, you have now on the left side, the 9280 with the 2.8. And again, I would say uh, this is, this is a, a, a nice, I think that I would do that. That is okay. But then again, the, the prime lens, it's just the shape of the head is just more organic going to be the M lens again. Mm. This was a technical comparison. Now we're going to talk to David about the artistic and about the atmospheric comparison for him as the model of this shoot. I'm going to share my screen now with you. And I hope that works out. So You're very technical. You know yeah, how to do all these things. I'm just happy I can send an email. So mm. Can you see the pictures? Yeah. I can see a lot of David Eloise, yes. <laughs> Good. So, David. I already, I already have a favorite picture. The one where I'm laughing so much that you can't, you can see inside my mouth to the um, left. This is this one, right? Yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. This is right uh, after you asked, uh, as I asked you how headshots in America look like. And then you were very serious. You did this. And <laughs> then... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm funny. <laughs> so if i compare those two do you have a favorite the one on the if i have to pick right away the one oh i was going to go with the one on the left because it's lighter and i'm not mm -hmm. seeing as many kind of crow's feet on my face i look <laughs> i think older in the right one but i like that it's closer I think if I had to choose, I would say maybe the left one, but maybe kind of go in a little more. Why, why do these? Oh, my eyes are open a little better in the left one. You can see my eyes a little better. <laughs> see, that's the difference. Because I'm doing the technical test here. I'm just looking at the background. <laughs> the background? Yeah, because from a technical point of view, background is, the, is, is that what's happening. Because what you want... <laughs> is you want to have like your eyes and your your face 
separated from the background. Yeah. So well, the creamier the, the background is, the better. Right. Okay. So, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. So I would say it's a little less defined in the background and crisper on my face in the photo on the left. That's not as, you know, zoomed in. I, okay. I, I find that photo the best. And by the way, no actor has ever looked at a photo of themselves and looked at the background. <laughs> of course not. Of course they, they not. only look at themselves. <laughs> of course. So, yeah, those two are like very similar because it's basically the same focal length and the same aperture. It's more interesting because on a on a portrait lens, you want to have the widest open aperture as possible. So the yeah. lens I was looking at was a 1.4 aperture lens, and I don't own a 1.4 aperture lens. So I own a 2 and a 2.8 and the 4. Those are like the most, the fastest apertures I can, I can have with my lenses. The interesting comparison is to compare the lenses with the best apertures for each lens. These are now two different oh. lenses. This is the, on the left is the shorter zoom lens. And on the right is the longer zoom lens. The longer zoom lens has the better aperture. So right. I think it's the better picture because of that. The picture. one on the right. The one on the right. For several reasons. From a technical Not just, point of view. Yes. Wow, I really hit a very similar pose on, just so everybody knows, the, the, we, we did similar areas. But once you change the lens, when we moved around, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I love, just, I'm giving, I'm giving myself a little credit here, but I, you're just I like a the very, very the right. precise actor. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. But I like the one on the, on the right. On the right. Yeah. So, and why can you say why? Oh, well, now I'm looking at the background being a little more out of focus. So <laughs> my face paused and after I, I think I'm, I've got a little bit of a scowly look on my face with my eyes. Like from your attitude, it's it's relaxer. It's on the right. On the right. It's more like yeah. in the moment. I like the right one as well, but of course I like it. Uh, and here you can see the comparison very good because you can see you're much better separated from the background because the background is a little bit creamier. And right. when you even have even better um, apertures, you can start doing like the, 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 you have more depth in the face because you can have the eyes in focus and then the ears are already out of, a little bit out of focus. That, that gives more depth in the, in the picture. Right. Let's go to this one and take this away. This is the small manual lens on the right. One on the right is the camera that you had to uh, focus yourself. Mm -hmm. And and just because I'm I'm not a technical person, all the apertures are, are the same as we're comparing, right? No, all the apertures are for each lens the fastest possible. That's the difference of those lenses. That's if you have the aperture as open as possible, you ca can have on the right you have an aperture of two, which is cool, and on the left you have an aperture of four, which is for a portrait it's not optimal. Got it. I can now change the one on the left. And now we have the longer zoom lens and the manual lens. Well, those are both uh, good. This, this one is nice. I don't know. Maybe it's my interpretation, but I have the feeling on the, in, in, in the left picture, you're like, it sounds strange, but you're more relaxed, even though you're right. Like, well, I'm just talking. Right. I mean, you're talking to now about the attitude. I also like that my head is not as cocked. You know what I mean? Uh, in the picture on the right, I'm leaning a little bit to yeah. my left a little bit. But you, you get what I'm saying. It, I guess it's just a matter of taste, whether you have a little more. Yeah, light but, you know, for me as a photographer, my concern is that on the right, you're basically waiting for me to pull the trigger because I'm still searching for focus. And on ah, the left, I hear it. It's so many, so funny how so many things are in your mind yeah no, but and on the left you're just we're just shooting you know and you're talking we're shooting and it's a little bit more right. you're a little bit more free it's so funny because you're thinking about the focus i'm aware of the focus thing but no one <laughs> other than you and me being aware is looking at that going 
maybe because it takes so basically um that, that's the comparisons i wanted to make okay we can also look at the closer ones this one and this one those are both good you know what i as an actor i'm, I'm looking at the background now they both look similar out of focus uh, i still um, think i still think it's the same thing on the left you're more relaxed on the right, you're waiting for me to stay to focus. Well, on the right, I'm getting a little, yeah, you can see I'm a little like, all right, Florian, press Florian, the button. come on, can, come on. Press the button. <laughs> <laughs> but the one, the one on the left, also my eye, my right eye, when I smile, mm -hmm. uh, uh, closes a little bit, you know. So I have to work on smiling, but keeping that eye open because when I, smirk smile I, I i raise the right side a little bit and that closes my right eye a little bit listen these are all very technical things <laughs> <laughs> yeah so before we end i also wanted to talk again we uh, had that conversation on when we were shooting tell me from a from a workflow kind of view what is important for you as an actor during a portrait shoot What, what well, first of all, I'll talk for all actors and say a compliment here or there. When you're taking a photo of an actor, if you go, oh, wow, oh, that looks good. Oh, this is good light or whatever. Just a little, even when you're acting with someone, not just taking headshots, but a little bit of an encouragement feels good. You know, I mean, not just an actor, but if you say to someone, oh, wow, your hair looks really nice or whatever that is, there's a there's a there's a nice feeling that 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 happens, you know. Um, and I think a little bit of a direction uh, uh, helps, you know, look at me, lower your chin a little bit or, or that kind of thing. If I'm doing my chin lower thing and I'm doing this and this is coming out a little bit, you could say face a little more and then that'll help. So it means that you're looking out for me. You know, it means that you're connecting with me and that and that feels good. Also, if it takes forever you know, the technical aspect of it. You want it to be great, you know, but everybody with, with the business is you say you hurry up and you wait for lighting. You know, usually when you're filming, lighting is could be 80% of the day, you know. So a, a nice thing is when you're taking headshots outside, you 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 have already chosen where your light is and, and what you're going to be doing. But There's a little bit of uh, a verbal communication that you can have with an actor that I think is is important or anyone you're taking a photo of, you know. Okay, see, and that brings me to my situation that I need an autofocus lens because <laughs> I can concentrate on complimenting you, directing you, helping you when I don't have to think about the technical aspect. If I start, like, if my head is spinning, like, with... Ah, shit, it's not it's not in focus. Uh, then all of a sudden I see something in the light, and then I have two things, and then I have to complement, and then blah, blah. so and for me, it's you always want to have the technical park you want yeah. you want it to have not matter in that moment. That's right. why I'm so thankful that you took the time and did a technical <laughs> shoot with me. <laughs> and uh, next time we're gonna do a real shoot. Well, we did, we did another, we did an inside real shoot, which was very Ooh, interesting yeah. to me too. Different countries do uh, different, um, there's, there's certain photographs that are the type of photographs you do. Uh, in America, a long time ago, you would have one photograph and then you'd have four or five photographs on the back with different mm -hmm. characters and feels and things. And then, and then it became, you know, like a studio shoot. It used to be, it used to be black and white. All the headshots used to be black and white. And then it was like, are you doing color? Is color happening? You know, and, and we became, I think in America, very bright with our colors mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, but in, in, at least in Germany, uh, the photograph of actors is very uh, shadowy, uh, darker. Uh, there's a, there's a more, uh, uh, I don't know, grounded, realistic. A little bit more the natural, the natural. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit rougher. The, the American headshots I always have the feeling in the end, there is like this glossy spray comes over it. Uh, yeah. and 
And so it has, sometimes the American headshots, I think they're kind of artificial. I, I, I can only talk about me. I like when I see the person and not yeah. posing. That's, that's basically my, my um, critique I always have uh, on, with headshots is that I often think it's actors presenting themselves how they see themselves. Or how they want to be seen, and then it's well. Then I, like I should not. I should present myself like this. Like though. this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then you know, then sometimes the depth is missing for me. And the, I mean, the headshots we did um, in the studio; those were extreme ones with the black background and uh, yeah. only one light and stuff. But uh, yeah, I like those. Yeah, I did too, and they were they were uh, uh, an interesting different experience for me you know so but it was fun this was great i enjoyed i enjoyed doing the shoot and also it took a little bit of you know it it it, it made it easier for me because i wasn't i was just i was being there for you it wasn't you were there so much for me mm -hmm. because i was i was i was thinking of being a service to you so i wasn't you know as concerned about how i was uh feeling or, or, or looking, you know, which felt good. I liked that, that it took the pressure off me, you know. Okay, my friend, next time you have one, you have one good for me, for me, we're going to do a uh, headshots. <laughs> Real yes. ones. And when, when you get the new lens, we'll have to do more, uh, more. We do, uh, we do a sequel, of course. Yes. <laughs> cool. Cool. David, cool. thank you so much. So where am I at? I like those three lenses. I'm happy I have those three lenses, but they're not the optimal portrait lenses for my SL camera. The 90 Apo M is a fantastic portrait lens if I shoot portraits on an M and if I like accept that manual workflow. The two zoom lenses for the SL are fantastic zoom lenses, but if you do dedicated portrait shoots, they are not optimal. There's one thing I want to show you with the 90 to 80. If you go like full on 280 and you step a few meters back, then you're getting like the kind of portrait look I'm like aiming for. But then again, with a 280, the shape of the head is different and I'm not happy with that. So the perfect focal length for a portrait shoot is between a 75 and a 90. So with a 90, I would have that. I will probably really have a look at the Sigma 85 art lens with a 1.4. So maybe you can give me a tip if you own this lens, if I have too high expectations or if this is really the one I should get for my portrait project in the fall. This probably was not your regular comparison video, but I hope it was fun. I had fun making it, even though I'm still like thinking about buying a new lens, which I was hoping I'm not anymore after doing this comparison. So let me know how you do your portrait shoots. Do you have a Sigma Art Lens 1.4 or do you have another tip for me on how I can achieve best portraits with my SL2? Please with autofocus, this is important for me. That's basically what I learned with this test. I need to have autofocus when I do fast portraits. So if you had as much fun watching this video as I had making it, please like and subscribe and I see you in the next video. Stay curious.